Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a city of Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what has spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree. He has filled the, the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his posterity forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. My dear brothers and sisters, happy feast day of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin. You know, God is unique in all his ways and impeccable in everything he does. In the coming of his only begotten Son in human form, he chose the holy and immaculate womb of the Virgin Mary to accomplish the mystery of the Incarnation. So that, filled with the grace from above, this purest Virgin received the singular honor of being the mother of her Creator. Her assumption into heaven is another instance of 
the manifestation of the fullness of grace in her in the most special of ways. That's why we always say, Mary, full of grace. And who gave her that grace? It's God. God gave her that grace. Mary, full of grace. May the merits of the feast of today bring us to share in the promises of God fully accomplished in the Virgin Mary. My dear brothers and sisters, the feast in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, especially today the Assumption, brings us to celebrate the great things which the Lord accomplished in her. All of these great things were accomplished by God for the greater glory of His name and for the spiritual edification of all those who believe. The unthinkable and the unimaginable happened to Mary because she believed and trusted in the unfailing power of God. This exemplary and unwavering faith of Mary remains the foundation of the many great things which the Lord accomplished in her. In the words of the Gospel reading of today, the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is His name. The assumption of Mary into heaven in body and soul remains one of the fruits of her ideal faith in God and in God's plan for her, and above all, of the operation of the fullness of grace in her. Because she is the only creature who is full of grace. We have also, all of us, we have also received grace from God, thanks to our baptism. But she, in a special manner, is the only creature full of grace. The plenitude of grace is with her. Already present in the teaching and devotion of the Church in her earliest centuries of existence, this article of faith, which means the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, was uh, dogmatically defined by Pope Pius XII on the 1st of November, 1950, with the Apostolic Constitution Munificentissimus Deus, which means the most bountiful God. That was the title of the Apostolic Constitution of the Pope, Pius XII. Munificentissimus Deus, the most bountiful God. Declaring that the Immaculate Mother of God, the Ever-Virgin Mary, having completed the course of her earthly life, was assumed, body and soul, into heavenly glory. Note the, uh, the, uh, the wordings of this uh, dogmatic constitution. Having completed the course of her earthly life, was assumed, body and soul, into heavenly glory. This declaration of faith of the Church does not actually negate that the Blessed Virgin Mary died. However, it affirms that following the course of God's plan for her, her human body knew no decomposition. Rather, it was assumed into heaven together with her soul. 
This article of faith is intimately linked to the prerogatives which God, in His infinite mercy and benevolence, had accorded His holy handmaid, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Firstly, of being the human mother of God. Secondly, of being immaculately conceived in the womb of her mother, Saint Anne, for the purpose of being made spotless and irreproachable to contain the mystery of the Incarnation. So Mary was born immaculate. Mary was born sinless, the only creature who was born sinless. All of us are sinful. All of us, we are sinners. The only creature is Mary. Why? Because she will be the mother of Jesus, the Son of God. That's why God himself prepared this abode, this tabernacle, this house, so that his only begotten Son can come to this world through the Immaculate Virgin Mary. Thirdly, the delivering of her most holy child without any corporeal violence, for she never conceived him through corporeal violence, hence perpetually preserving the splendor of her virginity. In all of these, it was still the fullness of grace that was at work in her. Mary, full of grace. God gave her that fullness of grace. In the Blessed and Holy Virgin Mary, we see what God wishes for all of His children and what the power of grace can achieve in all who place their trust in God. This power can change everything about us when we remain faithful to God and when we trust Him without wavering in His promises like the Virgin Mary. She is the model of all Christian virtues because in her was deposited the fullness of grace. She is never lacking in any grace and that is why all the promises of God were realized in her. Being full of grace, she is able to be a dispenser of grace through her powerful intercession. Through her faithfulness to God and trust in His plans and promises, she embodies all the merits of Christ, her Son. Mary, remains a model for all. By imitating her virtues, we make ourselves available to experience the power and working of God's grace and to receive in our lives the merits of Christ. In the words of the second reading of today, just as all men and women die in Adam, so all men and women will be brought to life in Christ. Mary lived and lives for Christ. She now lives in the glory of heaven. So by that singular act of grace through which she was assumed into heaven in body and soul, so that where Christ is, there she will be also. And from where Christ reigns as king, from there also she reigns as queen. For a greater sign appeared in heaven. A woman adorned with the sun, standing on the moon and with the twelve stars on her head for a crown. Hail! Blessed Virgin Mary, full of grace and assumed into heaven, be closest to us 
through your maternal, most powerful, and virginal intercession, that we may grow in faith and trust in the promises of God, that we may listen to your Son, Jesus Christ, and do whatever he commands, and that the power of the Holy Spirit may be most fruitful in us, in the church, and in the world. Amen. The Lord be with you.